DR simple continuous replication feature from pure storage. So what is active DR anyway? Well, it's all about business resiliency and giving you the ability to streamline your disaster recovery processes, to readily adapt to changes in production and have those get reflected in your DR environment, and to fail over quickly and immediately respond to disasters with just a click of a button. All of this at nearly any distance with no additional infrastructure and with integration with our snapshots, protection groups, and volumes. It's based on kind of the traditional model where site one is a production site and site two is your DR site, and we can connect them virtually over any distance. It simplifies the DR workflow, it adapts on the fly to changes that you make in production, and it doesn't require any additional infrastructure. All of this translates into superior data protection a near zero RPO for the minimum amount of data loss during a DR, a low RTO, quick failover, all of it delivered on a single platform, Flash Array. We've made deploying active DR extremely simple, really just four steps. Our demonstration environment consists of two sites, one in London, one in Prague, and the distance between those two is approximately 600 miles. We have a Windows 2016 server attached to a Flash Array at each of the sites, those two flash arrays are connected with 10 gigabit ethernet for the replication network. And then configured on each of the arrays are pods. On the production site London, we'll have prod pod one with two volumes in it. And then you'll see throughout the course of the demo, when we create the replica link to Prague and our DR site, that we'll get a second DR pod with the same volumes in them. So we'll have a demo volume and an IOM volume. So if I go to pods, and select prod pod one, I can use that pod as my source pod. So into that pod, I wanna move two volumes that correspond with the applications that I have running in production, iometer and this production data application. So I'm gonna use the move in function and move those volumes into prod pod one. And then from there with active DR, we simply create a link between that pod and then one in another flash array, TME FA12. So here we're connecting TME FA12, we're selecting async replication, and then we're putting in our connection key so that we can let the two arrays communicate with one another. And then what's also nice here is we're able to, even if there isn't a pod ready at the DR site, we can create one. So here we're just gonna create a pod named DR pod. And as simple as that, we've got the two arrays connected, replicating, um, and initially things start off by baselining. Obviously the target doesn't yet have all the data, so we need to baseline it to get it set up. From there, once baselining completes, we move to replicating mode. So you'll see here we've transitioned on the right to replicating mode. And then as soon as the GUI on the left refreshes, now we're replicating and we're getting an extremely low, if you look at the lag, it says one second RPO. And at the target site, the volumes are available. Now I can pre-connect hosts. So, so here at my DR site, I'm gonna use the DR demo uh, win host and I'm gonna connect the two volumes that are in that DR pod ahead of time. Again, while I'm replicating with no impact to my RPO, my RPO is still one second if you look at on the, on the left there. And now um, if I look at the serial numbers, I see um, I've got the, the two volumes there. And if I rescan my Windows host at my DR site, the two volumes show up and I'm, I can actually take a look at the content if I'd like. So if I wanted to do a, a test failover, the way that we do that is we use the promote command. So promote means we're gonna make the volumes in that DR pod read, write, enabled. Uh, so as soon as it transitions from promoting to promoted, complete, it should take a second, I can now go and start up my applications at my DR site. So in this case, my example app is Iometer. And then I also have a, um, a file that, that um, a batch file that's gonna generate that same sort of production data output that you see, but now labeled DR data. So, so now I'm running my DR tests. When those tests end, all I, or I'm done testing, all I need to do is demote the pod. And by demoting it, I'll discard those changes and return to normal replication mode. For a real DR situation, 
the steps are identical to the test failover scenario. So here we're going to simulate power loss at the production site. So that's represented by the gray area there. Uh, and our response, just like it was in test, is to promote our DR pod. Now the promote process is taking the changes that have arrived while the pod was demoted and applying them and bringing that pod up to the latest point in time so that you have the least amount of data loss associated with the failover. So now once the pod is promoted, as shown on the screen, we can come down and we can start up our DR application. So before we had an application that writes the, the prefix DR data to the data that's being written to a file. And then we'll also uh, show that we can start up iometer. So here iometer going against that E volume also can be started. So at this point, you know, we're relatively in a, in a matter of seconds, we're back online, we're running applications at our DR site and our business is back. Now, when power is restored, uh, to the production site. If we want to reprotect or reverse from our DR site back to production, all we'll do is demote that production pod. So you'll see the arrow is going to transition, and now it shows the replication going from the DR pod to the prod pod. And once this baselining process completes, we'll be back in kind of the reverse situation that we started with. We have production running at the DR site, and now production is gonna be where the data is, is landing or being replicated to. And now if we take a look at our log file, we can see that the DR data is in fact uh, arriving at the former production site, and now we have a nice reprotected application running at DR. So that's really the simplicity and ease of using active DR. And again, it's all about simple continuous replication, and it's part of a family of features built in to Flash Array. ActiveDR provides continuous data replication, near zero RPO, and very low RTO to simplify your disaster recovery process. If you have any questions about ActiveDR or pure storage products in general, please visit purestorage.com. Thank you.